I'm grateful to be able to say a few words about the 48 Etudes by Franz Wilhelm Ferling and the 12 Etudes by Marceau Mew from 48 Etudes plus 12 additional Etudes. Uh, this is the edition published by Le Duc. Um, I have played these beginning probably in 1967 or 8 with my former teacher, the late Joe Allard, and I'd like to just I uh, played them and taught them for 50 years. I thought I might discuss just a few uh, basic principles of the slow etudes and the fast etudes. Uh, I'm grateful to be here at the Hoyle Center for the Arts Concert Hall at Riverside City College. We have been here, this is the 10th session, uh, and we have recorded all of these, and I want to thank Professor Charles Richard, the producer and uh, honored faculty member here at Riverside Community College, Mr. Tony Rizzo, the videographer, also here at the Riverside Community College, and his assistants, Ellie Dormani and Alexandria Kaiseva. So, first let's talk about the slow Fairling etudes. The slow Fairling etudes are all about the pursuit of the musical line. Um, the first thing that has to happen in approaching the musical line is evenness of tone quality. What is evenness of tone quality? If I sing these three notes, la, that's generally even. If I sing them, la, that is not evenness of tone quality. On the saxophone, generally, the challenges for evenness of tone quality lie with middle B, C, and C sharp, and with A with the octave key, that note, and the, with the palm keys. Um, thus, generally evenness of tone quality. represent skeletonizing the melody, that is, the important notes. And he talked about reaching the cadence point. You'll have to have enough volume left for the last note of the cadence point. In romantic music, the dynamic markings are, are not always marked that way, but nonetheless necessary. So in number seven, which you're looking at, here's the notes that Joe Allard circled. Now for that phrase, those are the important notes, and as you put the whole phrase together, Finished it as we go on to line 
two just before the rest. That is the cadence part. So you, you again, you have to play the line with evenness of tone quality and reach the cadence point, which is now, as we go on to line two, here are, are the notes that Joe Allard circled, again, as skeletonizing the melody. save some dynamics, some volume, so you can make a further decrescendo at the last note after you've reached the cadence. Uh, so these are two things that Joe Allard talked about. Evenness of tone quality, number one, of course you have to have evenness of tone quality uh, to play the musical line, and you need to skeletonize the melody and, and have an idea of where the uh, the cadence point is as well. So the musical line really is all about a seamless connection between point A back to point A, that is harmonically, melodically, from A back to A. Uh, something like this in uh, number 45. as opposed to the way most uh, kind of uh, elementary students play this, which would be something like this. This is not correct. Most beginning students tend to want to put an accent of some kind on each note rather than have that seamless quality which produces the musical line. My whole uh, musical career has really been in pursuit of the musical line. So I play a slow fairly when I warm up every day to hopefully keep the ability to play the musical line. Fairly 
so that I can play the Bacchianos Brasileiros. That, that was the first part of the Bacchianos Brasileiros by Heitor Villalobos. So uh, I think uh, that encompasses the basic principles of, of all 29 slow uh, etudes writ, uh, six of which were written by Marcel Mew and the rest by Fairlane. Uh, it's all about the pursuit of the musical line. So I'd like to say a few words about the 29 fast Fairlane and Marcel Mew etudes. That is, those that are marked at a faster tempo. I play these and use them to teach making music, just as I do the slow ones. I'd like to just say a few words about staccato tonguing. Staccato, of course, means separated. The question is, how much are, is each note separated? How much silence? And how to end each note. Uh, a note that you cut off with your tongue sounds like this. off with your breath sounds like this. So in order to play musical phrases, uh, and I'm going to uh, play a little from the Fairlane Etude number 14, the, I have marked the straight lines as, in, as notes that are cut off even though they're slurred, cut off with the tongue even though they're slurred. I have marked with brackets, as you'll see, those notes that end a phrase and are not cut off with the tongue for that reason. And the notes that aren't marked are generally cut off with the tongue. So I'll just play uh, one or two phrases here and then go back and talk about them. <laughs> Measure two, you will see the first bracket because that E is the last note of the previous phrase. I'm just going to play from the beginning of measure of line two to that note, and I will not cut it off with my tongue, and then I'll go back and cut it off with my tongue, hopefully demonstrating that it really sounds kind of strange that way. So here's how it should be. Here's the mistake many people make. Doesn't make music that way. Those four notes are interesting. The second note, the D, is cut off with the tongue to separate it from the last note. A then is not cut off with the tongue because it is the last note of that little phrase. If you cut it off with the tongue, it would sound doesn't fit. So thus, I'm going to play slowly from the middle of the second line of number 14 to probably the last note of the third line. Well, following the markings that you're looking at. Practice and teach these fairlings 
uh, trying to uh, educate students concerning those staccato principles. Uh, there are a lot of other th considerations in these fair lanes. I'd like to play a little bit of number 18. 18 demonstrates hemiola, that is, different time signatures within the same measure. I'm going to start on line four, measure three, and just play, oh, I don't know, to line five or six. And I will demonstrate to me, and then I'll go back and play it slowly and talk about it. So, uh, let's take a look at line five, measure two. This is a 6-8 bar, but really it's six 2-8 bars. <laughs> Sorry, 2-16 bars, six 2-16 bars. The next measure uh, is pretty much the same. Now we have a 3-16 bar, a 4-16 bar, 5-16 bar, another 3-16 bar, another 3-16 bar, etc. So I'm going to play line 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, measure 4, slowly. Now, as you play that up to tempo, once again, starting on line 5, measure 2, So, Himiola, uh, in the first part, uh, li line two, measure one, it begins. Um, we, we really have three eight measures here instead of six eight measures. They're offset. So, I'll play the tempo first, then go back and talk about it. So, here's line two of number 18. I'm going to go back now and play that really slowly. So, line two, number 18. Now here's the first hemiola bar, so to speak. place. So, up to tempo that sounds. Now, now we get into line two, bar one, two, three, four, uh, many three sixteen bars. So here is that measure slowly. Up to tempo. This is uh, what I, why I practice fairling and why I have taught it for all these decades. I think that the, uh, the faster etudes are extremely valuable to learn how to play staccato, chimiola, and, and, and other very important music making ideas. That's just a few words about the fast etudes in the 48 etudes by Wilhelm Frederick Fairling with 12 additional etudes by Le Maitre Marcel Newton.